All right, you ready for the deep dive? There's a lot of weather that's going on. So in our insights, I always try and give you the insight as to what's happening in the forecast, right? Hi, Matt Noyce, one degree outside Weather Network. Here's the setup. We've had high pressure in charge for the last few days. It's been pumping the heat and humidity into us. Now take a look. It's starting to shift off the coastline. In comes a cold front from the north and west. There has been severe weather in advance of this front each day. We saw plenty here in New England during the course of the day on Wednesday. Now Thursday, I think there's going to be even more in the way of severe weather. And so does the storm's prediction center. Center, scattered severe storms in the area in yellow, isolated for the area in blue. That encompasses a lot of New England. Now, the threat here is going to be damaging straight line wind for the most part. We did see some of the storms yesterday rotating. None of them rotated tight enough to warrant a tornado warning. It'll be concerning with that. But it's not impossible that that happens as a storm grows enough, especially if it kind of is out on its own. It can develop its own environment. So it'll be something that we watch. But mostly it should be straight line damaging wind, hail inside, torrential downpours. And of course, with any thunderstorm, right, you're going to get thunder and lightning and lightning is going to be a threat with cloud to ground strikes. So what's going on to drive all this, right? It's not like there's a really strong energetic disturbance coming through, but there are energetic disturbances. And with the amount of heat and humidity we have, you don't need a very strong disturbance. So down to the south goes the ridge. This is at the jet stream level, atmospheric energy showing up in yellow and oranges. There is a disturbance that comes into northern Maine today, and that does cause for at least things to cool a bit in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And that's all you need because you're so hot and so humid at the ground. If you can cool the sky just a little bit aloft, that's enough to get these things touched off. And that's exactly what will happen today. In terms of the damaging wind threat, it's interesting. You look at the wind at about 18,000 feet. You say, well, Matt, the worst wind is way up in Canada. It is. But uh, notice that we're starting to get our wind blowing steady at about 40 to 45 miles per hour coming down, settling into New England. And so at that mid-level flow to get that, that's going to be kind of your average storm motion. They're going to move from west to east at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. But the other part of that is it gives you what you call ventilation. You're able to evacuate some of the air out of the top of the storm, which you need to do in order to keep storms growing. Otherwise, they build and then they die. Uh, so we think today with a little bit more ventilation, those storms would last a little bit longer. Also, there's a concern for heavy rain. What I think is interesting is that the Weather Prediction Center has highlighted the area in green for flash flood risk. I think there's more of us that are in that risk because if you look at the forecast precipitation i shared this in one degree outside today the video earlier um you notice the high amounts of the north i want to analyze that a little bit more i mean we're talking about two to four inches of rain across some of the mountainous terrain of the northern greens when you get around campbell's hump mount mansfield and we're talking about two to three to six inches of rain possible today uh when you get around waterville maine for example lewiston maine so this, to me, shows a concern for flash flooding, does extend farther to the north as well. And then, yes, when you get the Berkshires, you've got forecasts about five inches of rain in localized spots, and you're more like one to two when you come into eastern and central mass, and probably your risk of flash flooding will be less. Remember, the storms do keep moving with that wind that we looked at, so that at least lessens the flash flood risk. But the problem is, if you get several of them kind of back to back, it adds up on the total rain. It changes the air for tomorrow. There's a cold front coming in, right? So we're going to end up, look at this, with much, much cooler temperatures temperatures for your Friday. We still may hit 90 down at Yonkers, but really most of us are running in the 70s or around 80 degrees. There'll still be showers and even thunderstorms Friday because the cold front's still kind of hanging around. Take a look. I put the wind on here. Now you've got a northeast wind on Friday coming into the coastline, but you've still got a southwest wind at the south coast. So in between where the wind comes together, that raises your chance for showers. And you can see in the morning, uh, this is at 11 a.m. on Friday, you've got at least some areas of showers around. They do start to try and converge into thunderstorms when we get to 2 p.m. This may end up verifying a little bit farther south. In fact, you'll see in the forecast, see that by 5 p.m. they sink south. I think they may just start out a little bit farther south for southern New Hampshire points southward. But thunderstorms are a possibility, again, again, probably away from the coast where you get showers, but not the same propensity for storms because of the northeast wind. Then the wind goes fairly quiet as we get to 8 o'clock on Friday evening. A lot of this starts to sink southward through the, through the south coast and come to an end. Saturday, it's a cool day in northern New England, only about 70. That includes the Lakes region. Not the greatest day either. If we look at the map on Saturday, there's a ton of clouds around in the morning. There will be a number of showers in the mountains, which is what keeps the temperature cool. The farther south you go, the drier the day is on Saturday. There is the chance of just a passing shower over the course of the uh, morning. But then really, it's later in the day that your chance of showers goes up. You can see at 5 p.m., some scattered showers may come riding through. Uh, once we get to Sunday, 
in the morning, there may be showers near the Canadian border in western New England. And again, as you get late in the day, this time I've skipped to 5 p.m. So the disturbance comes in. We mentioned this yesterday, right? It comes in during the uh, late day or evening on Sunday. That may focus some downpours and thunder on the way by. And Monday, there may be some leftover showers around as well. Just a reminder, if you want to get any updates at any time here, particularly today with the storms, I want you to get the app. You can do that in the App Store or if it's for Google Play, just go to our homepage, OneDegreeOutside.com. Click on the link at the top of the page. All right, we'll bring any updates as needed through the day, but the big thing is keep the notifications on on the app so you get them before the storm arrives. Stay safe. Have a great day.